Hello, everyone. Today, welcoming back for the third time, Mr. Brian Flynn from Super 7. Brian, how's it going? How you doing? Hey, it's been a busy Friday. Oh, yeah, I'm sure it has. <laughs> That's how um, it's going. It's been busy. Yeah, surviving, thriving, or somewhere in the middle? I think I am treading water. Thanks for thanks for taking some time to meet with me again. Um, last time we spoke, it was just before San Diego Comic-Con. San Diego Comic-Con is now about three weeks past, and there were some really awesome things to show off there. Um, and I'm really looking forward to, to talking through it with you, actually. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. No, no, we had a lot of fun. There was a bunch of cool stuff. Like, yeah, it was great. What do you, yeah. what do you want? Let, let's talk about some Godzilla stuff. Yeah. Well, I watched uh, Pixel Dan's video at the pop-up for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That looked like so much fun. That was ridiculous. We were uh, way more people showed up than we expected. We were a little yeah. worried there for a minute, but <laughs> awesome. we fed everyone. Yeah, some some strawberries and anchovies, uh, maybe. But that one was gross. <laughs> that one was gross. But jelly bean and sausage was surprisingly good. Hey, sweet and salty, man. Sweet and yeah. salty. <laughs> True story. Well, in the spirit of San Diego, I thought it might be nice to sort of get into the background. Uh, so as we talk through some of these exclusives and go through what was shown off at the booth, um, I'm very proud that I haven't had to use some visual aids up to this point, but there's just so much stuff that I wanted to touch base about that I think it's, uh, it's almost kind of necessary. So, you know, you really came pack in some amazing exclusives. When we talked last time, you were alluding to this two pack that you thought was a really fun moment in time. Uh, and I saw a bunch of comments afterwards, people like, oh, like, what could it be? What could this fun thing be? And sure enough, it's the handshake moment, Godzilla versus Megalon at the very end, Jet Jaguar and Godzilla shake hands. Uh, and you've managed to capture this iconic scene here in plastic form. This thing is awesome. This is such a fun set. Yeah, and it is. I mean, it. I know there's people will be like, I already have that Godzilla. I already have that Jet Jaguar. But, you know, we had to tool different arms for both of them so they could shake hands. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's that same thing. It's such a cool, sweet, rad, whatever you want to talk about it, moment from the series. And I was like, ah, man, that handshake moment. I think people are going to really dig it. But you never know till till it goes, till mm -hmm. it shows up. You never know how people are going to respond <laughs> to it. But uh, yeah, it was same thing. Like, I don't think it was on anybody's radar of like, oh, I need Godzilla and Jet Jaguar shaking hands. But mm -hmm. then when you show it to him, you're like, oh, I need Godzilla and Jet Jaguar <laughs> shaking, shaking hands. Yeah. And now I heard from someone that this sold out at the booth a couple of days in and online, I think it may, lasted maybe three days before it was gone. Um, and I got to ask for your input here. Do you think that this was uh, a circumstance where you were just very calculated about how many you were making? Or was this a little bit more of a runaway hit that sold out faster than you expected? A little bit of both. I mean, th there are physical limitations to the amount of inventory that we can bring to San Diego proper. Mm. First and foremost, we have to, ahead of time, before anybody's seen everything, make calculated bets on all right, which one's going to, you know, what are people going to go after? How many do we need? How many, you know, and then there's a limit to how much we can store and how much we can have delivered back to the booth every day out of storage. Um, and the second part is just because you can't come to San Diego doesn't mean you shouldn't have the opportunity to get it. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we make this stuff on that. I try to make it so, like, everybody's got a few days or, you know, yeah, however long to to grab it mm -hmm. and then it moves out once again you're making calculated bets and inventory allotments and so you don't quite know which is going to work which way or the other uh so it, it, it's always a little bit tricky uh you know and then i'll have some people go well it's not really a san diego exclusive if you can get it right afterwards i'm like well you know it, it's still the reason for it to exist is san diego and it's exclusive to that we always try to make the exclusive something where if you don't get them you're not missing part of it in your collection mm -hmm. it's it's a nice to have not a need to have you know it's mm -hmm. not like a main character like that's the only place you're ever going to get jet jaguar like yeah so um you know, but we try to make it fun and exciting 
and then it kind of comes in and it goes out pretty quickly and then we move on you know then you move on to sort of your core figures and these are special moments at san diego um so yeah why it sold out you know in the first two days at the event is you know we allocated what we thought we needed for the booth based on you know previous years and everything else and the demand was higher than we thought so <laughs> Then it was like, oh, we should have brought more. You know, you just never know. There's always going to be a couple things that you bring too few of, and a couple things you bring too many of. For sure. Yeah. Well, it's it's and it's just a it's a fun set. It's a great moment in Godzilla's cinematic history, captured in plastic form. Very fun set. Um, moving on to the head rod. Now, if I understand, this is a this is inspired by colorway of a is it Bullmark? That oh was... yeah, let, let, here. Shall we do a little bit uh, now? Sure. I, I might, there's an off chance, I might lose you for a moment. <laughs> for a moment, okay. Well, we'll see here, hold on. I'm gonna keep this headed to the ceiling here. Do, 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 do. <laughs> and then we'll do show and tell. Show and tell. Right. Um, let's go here and we'll talk about vintage Bullmark heteros. All right, so. Oh. oh look at that wow there's uh there's a lot of glare here and i didn't bring my keys of course all right so let's see get out of the glare here um it's yeah, a little hard to see, see. no you all can right. see them so that this is the bullmark edition of hetera mm -hmm. and uh you've got the regular bullmark yellow uh, that's actually a master mold test shot. That's the Osaka flesh bootlegs. And this is the Hawaii version. So when they made the vintage heteros, uh, they were exporting figures to Hawaii right in the late, in the early to mid seventies before Bullmark went under and they would repaint all the, all the figures for Hawaii in bright colors that were different from the regular ones. Mm -hmm. So, the one that went to Hawaii was uh, pink vinyl with this orange on the face, black, metallic, green, and red uh, paint. I realize that is the most the worst looking uh, <laughs> glared out thing, but that so that's what it is. So we, the Bullmark Hedera is the first Hedera toy, obviously, mm -hmm. and. Uh, the colors have no frame of reference at all to anything <laughs> remotely close to the character. Right. Uh, and so we've already, and if anybody's paying attention, they know that Hedera is my favorite Godzilla monster. Yes. So <laughs> yeah. Kyle, well, Kyle told us that in our, my first chat with him back in December, he was like, he's like, he's, he's joked a couple times that it's Minya, but I think that's just mostly to, to get under my skin. I'm pretty sure yes. it's Hedera. Yes, that is completely to get on the kind of skin. <laughs> um, so uh, we had done, you know, sort of the charcoal gray hetera, as you see in the movies with the radiating sort of yellow uh, irises and everything. And so at San Diego, it's like, well, there's a lot of other hetera colorways. Let's get into that. So let's do the Hawaii specific Bullmark color spray on the classic hetera and make it uh, available that's why you've got the silver on the eyes with the round dot pupil because mm -hmm. that happens on the bull mark right yeah this this colorway is like the, the picture the render here doesn't do it any justice i have it in in person the the sort of metallic colors it's just a beautiful little figure and it's so cool it, it is and you know quite frankly monsters in pink always work yeah, absolutely. You know, so uh, yeah, it's just it, it's a it's a deep cut vintage toy reference, but it's also it's not just well technically the bull mark. It's also like no, it looks so cool. They look badass. Absolutely, yeah, love this little hetera. Uh, moving on, we're continuing with the Glow series, Baragon and Angiris. I have I picked up two of the Baragons because. I, I really liked the sculpt. I thought the sculpt was just so much fun, so cute. Um, and then there's something about the simple color scheme of just the glow plastic with a little bit of that green brushing that really, 
I don't know. It just makes it look so cool. Uh, very, very reminiscent of a like a Safubi soft yep. vinyl toy. Um, absolutely love this one. Now, I know some of your previous glow variants have been inspired by pre-existing toys. I know the Gigan was one one such case. Were there any direct references or homages you were trying to make with these two? Not really. Um, you know, uh, there's certain colors that work really well on glow with and then sometimes the colors don't make any sense for the character and you want them to look disparate from each other. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, glow with green all always looks good. Uh, the brown and gold that exists on Angerus, you know, we want to have a little bit of that. That still, it still needs to feel like Angerus. So, um, you know, we just try to make them all a little bit different in coloring so that way you don't end up with a bunch that look the same. Mm -hmm. that makes any sense so that like yes they're all glow but they all kind of have their own personality mm -hmm. rather than like oh they're all just like two or three colors over and over and over again sure sure yeah really really love these guys and always excited to see what comes next um down here we've got the aurora kit brought down yeah. to reaction scale fully articulate well not full well yeah fully articulated it's with the articulated yeah yeah with the stand that is removable um this one is is really cool kind of came out of left field yes it's no surprise to anybody that's bothered to listen to me talk about godzilla at this point that i love all the vintage godzilla toys right we just had a hetero you know we did not a rabbit hole i should have brought my keys and opened up the case so it wasn't all glary or whatever but uh i my love for godzilla as much as it is from the movies is from all the vintage toys and stuff like that so i'm always throwing back obviously to the stuff that i love about old godzilla product and you know the aurora model kit is one of those things like it's not based on a suit and it's got a really interesting head design that is downstream. I mean, yeah, I don't know, whatever. It's it's in that same vernacular as the bull mark, where it's the head doesn't even look like Godzilla. You know, quite frankly, yeah. if we talk about a lot of the early Godzilla stuff, they don't look anything like the character. The Shogun Godzilla technically doesn't look like Godzilla. The Aurora Godzilla technically doesn't look like Godzilla. But it's the the. I don't know, the spirit of Godzilla, if you will, <laughs> at this point. So the Aurora Kit is one of those iconic, iconic Godzilla toys. Like if you talk about classic Godzilla toys, you know, you start, it's like you have the Marison and Bullmark sculpt. You have the Marison play model, which is very similar. You have the tin. You have the Aurora Godzilla model kit and the Shogun like th those are like the iconic toy sculpts before you get to modernity if you will mm -hmm. so coming back obviously we scale down the shogun warrior you know that that's the sculpt that everybody just loses their mind on which we're going to talk about i assume here in just a minute because <laughs> he's next on the list yeah uh and so i was like let's let's do something with the model kit the 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 unfortunate part of the model kit is you can't play with it. You yeah. glue it together and you can't, it can't even move. <laughs> like, what would it be if you could play with the model kit? And that was sort of like, it's a toy, but it's not a toy. Let's do this. And like, what if we scaled it down, but made it a fully articulated figure? We'd already done a Shogun Godzilla colorway that was a tribute to the glow version of the Aurora kit. So it was just like, let's bring down the kit and make it into a toy and uh people are either going to be like that's stupid or we love it uh most people work toward the latter you know because the same thing it's like oh i've had that kit for years yeah it just kind of sits on that shelf but it's so great with the cityscape and everything and the aurora boxes are just bonkers amazing mm -hmm. so i don't know i don't know um yeah, but definitely, I think, surprising for a lot of people. Like, I was not expecting that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And as you were announcing these figures, you got one, two, three, four, five, six in the bag. You come out swinging with this ultimate Shogun Godzilla in the in the original poppy colors. Yeah, and, and same thing. It's, you know, what are we doing? 
but Shogun Godzilla, everybody's just like, every time I make one, people are like, okay, well, where's the next one? Well, yeah. Where's the next one? Where's the next one? And, you know, we were, we were definitely playing with this theory, you know, this little micro collection, if you will, of uh, throwing back to old toys. So the glows are obviously part of the glow series. So those look the way they did. The Jet Jaguar Godzilla, that's a moment. So it's going to look like that. But everything else we're talking about here is throwing back to toy history. So what we did was really color this up to match the Popey uh, figure from the late 70s. And whether people get it or not uh, is sort of immaterial. It's still a really cool colorway. It's a great looking figure. Once again, this is bef predates all the burning Godzillas and everything else. And why Popey chose to make it red, black, and silver, we'll never know. <laughs> right. But it's such a striking cut. Like you see that color and you go, that's the Popey. Yeah. I know that color scheme. And, um, yeah, so we just were like, all right, let's lean into this toy moment. And we've got a bull mark and Aurora and a Popey all in one place. Yeah. It's, it's funny because I, I was not very familiar with Popey. I knew about the sculpt. I didn't know about the colorways, uh, because I've, I've seen previous videos with your collection. I know you've got a couple of those sculpts in your, in your displays, but when this was shown off, I looked at the color. I said, I don't know which one this is but I know this is a Japanese toy colorway. I know it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because it makes no other sense otherwise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. But very, very charming. Yeah, the, the Shogun sculpt is, is amazing. And this colorway, it's just, it's, it's like two pieces of history sort of overlapping, coming together, making a really unique piece. It's awesome. Well, if you really think about it too, like the Popies, they, you can technically argue that maybe they weren't, but they were more or less out at the exact same time as the Shogun Godzilla. Mm. So, you know, you can very easily argue that this, if, if you would have released, if Popey would have released that instead, that could have been one of the colors. And once again, it doesn't make any sense. The Popey Jumbosaurus, you know, is green. Yeah. In Japan. <laughs> Godzilla's not green in Japan. Yeah. Why is it green? It doesn't make any sense. They're looking at American toys, so they're making this. And then, you know, and then their other figures are these colors. You're like, there is no rhyme or reason. Like somebody at Popey was just like, I don't know. What about this? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. You can you can and you can tell, right? Like again, you see it, you're like, yep, it's it's the Japanese. I know it's the Japanese. <laughs> and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense because the Godzilla is more or less, you know, in line. Mecha Godzilla's in line. Yeah. I'm sorry, not the Godzilla. I meant to say Mecha Godzilla. The Mecha Godzilla's in line. Like, yeah. oh no, that looks like Mecha Godzilla and it's colored more or less like Mecha Godzilla. You know, but the Rodan is also red. Yeah. With black and silver. Like, why is the Rodan red with black and silver? Because that's what they felt like doing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh all these so much fun really really happy to have them in my collection uh moving forward to the actual booth that you had going at san diego comic-con a few things that we'll we'll go through uh what i assume these are production samples wave four yeah and wave four i think is actually shipping now to people yep if you ordered direct from super seven you either have these in hand or you will have them very very shortly I'm waiting on Amazon to get theirs in stock and really, really looking forward to these. I think they, they turned out pretty damn rad. They, they, you know, I'm not saying it as the guy who did it, but yes, they did turn it. They're gigantic. They're amazing. I mean, look at how many of those crystals you have to go with your space Godzilla. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when that solicitation first came out last San Diego and I was like, how are there so many crystals in the box? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a really big box. Yeah, for sure. Uh, on the right here, you've got your space titanium Mechagodzilla Super Shogun. Um, I saw that you, you wrote on Instagram uh, how difficult it was to actually source the material for this colorway because it has a very unique manufacturing method. Well, you know, uh, the, the, the bodies of these are blow molded like the vintage ones. If we made them a different way, it would be way easier, but we want to make it exactly like the vintage Jumbo Machinders, AKA Shogun Warriors. And so the blow molded polyethylene, um, in as much 
what we were trying to do with the the very first releases, you know, we're trying to get close to Mecha Godzilla and Metallics, and we couldn't get there with the factory. Just nothing was working. A lot, some of the stuff they were trying to do was giving us big swirling patterns mm. within the material, uh, and in the end, you know, we we went with a gray uh, that because that's what we could get to and what we could work while we were still trying to be like, you guys can make silver, I promise. So what we, in the end, what I had done is I took some 1970s bootleg, what they call train station bootlegs. They're these unpainted metallic silver blow mold bootlegs that you used to be able to buy at train stations for dirt cheap. Like some, you know, dad on his way home, you know, could buy, you know, a really inexpensive bootleg, often unarticulated toy or just articulated at the shoulders and give it to their kid kind of junk toy which have an amazing wonderful charm to them and uh i i finally sent them some vintage ones i was like this is the material find this and replicate this and they actually got that and then it worked it worked and i think it's it's not it's because it's not pure polyethylene it's a it's a different blend and some other you know whatever you know much like you know you go to the paint store and they can take a swatch and just like you know oh it's th these colors there yeah. you go same thing they're like oh now that we know what what this material is we'll use that and then and then it worked so uh with the very first mecha godzilla it sold out faster than we expected. A lot of people missed it. It was starting to sell for quite a lot of money on the secondary market. So mm -hmm. we wanted to make sure that people had a chance to get it. So bringing back the Shogun Mecha Godzilla, but this time in the silver like we had originally hoped to do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm actually getting in on this one. The first one I really struggled with. I was like, ah, oh, I don't know. And then you came out with this one. I was like, okay, okay, you got me. <laughs> Wait till you get it in hand. Then you'll be like, I'm glad I did it. <laughs> I, I hope so. Um, now, I wanted to, to ask you, and, and so it's sort of, sort of related. Uh, there's a smaller company that's making, uh, they're making very niche kaiju action figures titanic creations have has this flown across your radar at all no but i can look it up very small um this was the first if i can do this here they're made they made a gorgo action figure oh okay so yep. fully articulated i um, think i i think i've seen these advertised i think i've because i they've got young young gary too yes yes young gary it's um, young gary it's I, I feel like i'm always saying it wrong because it's like young gary <laughs> it's like no it's not young gary you yeah know. uh tuesday they're starting their polgazari campaign uh and they're trying to get gappa they're trying to get gappa so they're they're really trying to get to those deep 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 obscure monsters but the owner of the company mac uh he actually posted a photo on socials with the first super shogun mecha godzilla and he was like oh my gosh i hope that super seven makes more of these yes and so I know that you can't really go to this customer too often because they're so bloody no, expensive. They are. But I'm just kind of curious how what your thoughts are on the future of the line and other other characters. Optimistic? Right now, you know, we've got this Mecha Godzilla mm -hmm. coming out, or I think it's it's big. It's available for pre-order, but I don't believe it's shipped yet. No, October. Um, October, yeah. And uh, you know, and then we'll just kind of see how it, how it goes. Like you mm -hmm. know. It's not like, oh yeah, that already sold out. It's like, no, you can still buy it. We <laughs> ordered it from us. Come on down. Yeah. It's it's nearly two foot tall of silvery goodness that shoots missiles. <laughs> what more could you ask for? So yeah, I, I'm 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 cautiously optimistic that we're gonna get to some more stuff in this space, but I think it's kind of one step in front of the other. Sure. Sounds good. Um now something quite Unexpected, nice surprise here at the bottom. A blazing Godzilla, translucent orange. Um, if I understand properly, this is a, a redeco of the 1995 Godzilla with the extra fin, I believe. Uh, I believe it is a combination to, I think we're using the melted fins from, oh, oh maybe, maybe it is the 95 with the revised fin and not the melted fin. No, I think it's blazing. 
you're right. I think I think this one is the redeco with the 95 extra fin. It is not the uh, it is not the melted fins from the the uh, 1200 degree. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. this guy shows up at the booth package. <laughs> this guy. So, anyways, yeah. <laughs> what was up with that guy? Yeah. 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 What is up with this guy? What's he doing? Uh, that's going to be an in stock release as opposed to a pre order. So okay. he will be coming a little later this year. And we're, you know, it's once again, it's not that necessary need to have sort of guy. It is a a fun one to have if you like all collecting them all which i fall into that camp mm -hmm. um so this one's going to be an in stock item a little later this year so you don't have to so it'll be available for sale immediately so in a case like that we're determining a run size and pre-making them and shipping them here as opposed to like all right everybody that wants one has a moment to get it you know and we'll see what the demand is we're sort of taking a bet on this one, but wanted to have an in stock a little later this year. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, the translucent plastic really looks great. Yeah, he's he's really, really cool. Awesome. Also at the booth, minus one, I what I assume is also a production sample. It was. It was a production sample. I think I think I have one here. I, I know my original production sample is that one, but then all <laughs> everything that went to the booth went someplace else. But I believe I could go see if there's one in a in a box around the corner here in a minute if we want. But yeah, it looks amazing. Let me see. Let me see if I have. I think I even have the blazing one here. Let me go see. Hold okay, on. sounds good. I was incorrect on my minus ones. <laughs> That's okay. You know, I have I have an unpainted black prototype here, but no one else is getting that one. That one's mine. <laughs> uh, but I do have one of these here. Oh, look at that! That's awesome. So, let's see if we can. It's not really showing the translucency through the screen screen quite the same, but yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, Bad to the bone. One thing I, I really like that you can actually see there is now that you guys aren't doing the sleeves, you've taken some of those elements that have been sort of traditionally there and you've put them onto the, the box, even though the sleeve isn't there. So that's really cool. Yeah. Sorry. All right. So anyways, uh, minus one. <laughs> minus one. Minus one production sample looking absolutely fierce and showing off a, a very new for the line articulation scheme. Right. Uh, well, the, the, yeah, some modifications. Yes, yes. Yeah, well, I, I mean, the the tail is is twisting and bending in <laughs> in a very dynamic way. And you've got that crunch on the 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 torso. It's twisting in a direction that the original first yeah, view couldn't do. Yeah, the ab crunch that's happening in there. There's a slightly different way that we're dealing with the hips, and then with the tail. I mean, quite frankly, what we did with the tail is we, we went to less pieces of articulation with a greater range of motion, if mm -hmm. that makes any sense. Rather, if you have 22 little pieces, they can only move ever so little bit to themselves, and then you're requiring the whole daisy chain to go versus like, all right, what if we broke this up into like six pieces? Like, like, all right, you know, I'll grab the, the, the black one. Okay. But it, it's like, okay, so... You know, there's where if I'm talking about what's in the Blazing Godzilla, like every segment of the tail is a piece. Where here, you know, it's, it's almost like it's every two mm -hmm. instead of every one, if that makes any sense. Sure. So in, in bringing down the level, the, the amount of pieces, we can actually get a greater range of motion. That yeah. Wow, look at that. So, you know, just doing a little bit of twisting and, and bending there, I'm in a much better space than if I'm trying to do it in 10 small places. Sure. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think it makes sense. Yeah, because if you if you do it each individual segment, there's not a whole lot of room to do stuff. Yeah. Whereas if you if you focus every two sections sort of, you you, you give yourself 
a little bit of room to actually get in there and add maybe some double barbells, things like that. Yeah, some extra space. And then, yeah, and you can see like the, the range of motion on that rocker up up top. Oh, no, there we go. There we go. Oh, yeah. yeah. Look at that. Wow. The other head on there, but yeah, they, yeah. this I, I have to say that this figure turned out not that the others turned out bad, but this figure like killed it, yo. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And this is this is on the water, uh, scheduled yes. to ship direct from Super Seven uh, early next month, along with the one in the background we can see here, minus color. This yeah. your packaging team fucking killed it, man. I am gonna be <laughs> so sad having to take this out of the box. Well, you look at that. Don't have to be sad taking it out of the box. You can just put the box over here and take a look at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh man and that looks so cool i'm i'm so stoked on this um so question uh kyle and i spoke about how um actually let's let's dial it back a little bit when you and i last spoke we were talking about tail articulation and we were saying yeah. how you know because of the size of the tails on these guys and the the motion that folks kind of look for like you're almost dealing with the intricacies of an entire other figure easily easily for sure yeah. and so when i spoke to kyle back in december he was mentioning that minus one conscious decision let's put the budget into engineering this tail and this torso to really get that movement that that folks have been asking for and so that's why it has it's a little bit lighter on the accessories which i think is totally fine you can always sell accessories later you can't sell more engineering um but and I'm just curious. I don't know that it, I think I would do, on bridge with more engineering, different engineering. Sure. Yes. Exactly. Different engineering. Um, do you anticipate that this is a like a, an articulation scheme that we might see moving forward with the line? I think so. I think you know, obviously, as we move through every line, your goal is to always do better than the the one you had before. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll see a bit more of this for sure. Great. Awesome. Now, minus one, when we last spoke, you're mentioning very, very successful. Uh, the numbers higher than the rest of the Toho line. And we yep. were talking about like in stock model, how you were saying, you know, if you were to make a, an in stock model for this one, you definitely would have undershot it because of how many people actually showed up and were pumped for it. Right, right. Now, minus one, great movie, phenomenal movie, second best. If you ask me, yeah. there's other stuff going on in that movie, other forms that Godzilla takes on. And if you go with this minus color variant, it, there's sort of <laughs> variants built into the nature of the movie. So not asking you to, to confirm anything specifically, just wanted to ask you, are are you is is further delving into this movie sort of at the front of of where where you're taking the line right now? I mean, it would be stupid for us not to. Wouldn't it? <laughs> Cool. Cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, we're, we're definitely thinking about some more Godzilla here. Awesome. Awesome. Well, but you've got to get this one first. Yes. Yeah. You know, uh, not, I will sell. What was the old phrase? You'll sell no wine before it's time. You know? Sure. Sure. And yeah, hopefully people can share how stoked they are on that. Those figures, those first two. Uh, I, I, I think when people get them, they're going to be not that, like I said, it, it, turned out really well the team did a phenomenal job on this well said you know ne next up for kyle will be minya i'm just kidding <laughs> I'll, I'll let him i'll let him know but yeah. hey man sorry to, sorry to break it to you <laughs> brian says your next job is minya <laughs> so shortly after comic-con we got two more reaction figures another yes. header of vintage toy which i think was in the in the display actually yeah yep, just yep. Showed it off. this is the the companion piece if you will uh it is the bullmark color of the 71 hetero with yeah. the yellow green and orange mm -hmm. and then the skeleton godzilla so obviously the first one was available in that um is in that sort of display box where the skeleton's resting at the bottom of the sea. This is the one just on card with the oxygen destroyer. And this one would be the one that you would be able to go to like your regular store or target and pick up off the shelf. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that first one sold through, I think very quickly. And I was like, whenever something sells through very quickly at super seven, I, I think you guys 
try to see if there's if it makes sense to do it again but do it in a way that sets itself apart from the initial nature yeah i want to preserve you know we're all toy collectors to a degree so you want to be able to preserve what was special about the first one for those that have it mm -hmm. you know but at the same time you want to I, I want to make it so that it's accessible and fun and easy and affordable to collect like all of a sudden if you're like oh i really want skeleton godzilla and you know, but I don't want to pay $75 on the secondary market. Well, if you want it not in a display box with a slightly different, not much different, but paint wash and everything, you know, here it is on card. It's like, oh, okay, you can still have Skeleton Godzilla. But for the person that has that one in the undersea box, they have their Skeleton Godzilla as well. Sure. Yeah. Now, when the teaser went up for this batch, uh, it was just the skeleton card art. And I received about a dozen or so comments from people asking, like, do you think that this is Ultimates? Do you think that this is Ultimates? <laughs> and so I got I got to ask, is is an Ultimate Skeleton Godzilla <laughs> on the table? With the little wipe and the reveal? Yeah. You oh, know? Yeah. It's like, I pre-planned this. I, I got well. more, too, coming. I got, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, it, it's not in the pipeline right now. Um, it's an interesting idea. Uh, you know, we, we've been fortunate with Toho that let us do the 54 skeleton because, uh, you know, that, you know, very iconic moment in the first movie. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've had some people ask about the uh, 1200 degree Godzilla and that, that definitely, uh, the, the word back from the, the Toho team on that one was, I think you guys went too far on this one. Like it's a little, too gross and a little too much. So I'm not sure that that one's going to be coming back, but that's a really interesting idea. I hadn't really thought of that mainly because there's so many other monsters we haven't gotten to yet. Mm -hmm. uh, and quite frankly, we're still very much in, you know, he say, or Hey say, mm -hmm. you know, era in Godzilla and ultimate. So we haven't even gone back to show it yet, um, sure. but it's a, it's a, it's a really interesting idea. Okay. There's one I hadn't thought about. Okay. All right. We, we, we will leave it at, at that one. Um, now, something else you showed off at the at the booth. Reaction Plus. And I know, because I've been listening, I've been following along, that O-Ring is something that you've been really pushing for, really been wanting to do. I remember being on the bus home when Pixel Dan dropped the video that you guys did together. Uh, you know, very, very exciting news. I had a couple of folks wanting me to touch base with you to ask if Reaction Plus is possible with Toho. Uh, the, now, the, the nature of like monsters, I think it's very different than with human characters. Uh, but there is at least one humanoid character. And so I just want to touch base with you. What are your thoughts <laughs> on... <laughs> what your... As he flies in, look at him. Here we go. No, I, you know, I think it'll be really interesting to see sort of the market reaction to Reaction Plus. Mm -hmm. um there's there's a lot of things that might be able to be happening there one of these days i think it, right now you know it's squarely focused on gi joe mm -hmm. um but you know we've had some of those same questions ourselves like is there an opportunity other places for that or not i think that's still tbd mm -hmm. uh right now it's very focused around joe um mm -hmm. but it is definitely you know because it, it does present a completely different articulation pattern and play pattern for sure a lot of people so you know uh i don't know is, is that a way to answer it or not yeah i think it's let's see how it goes with joe and yeah. see see if it's worth opening up i think that's, yeah i think that th that's the gist i got anyway yeah i think <laughs> that that's that that is a fair assessment perfect perfect uh so i wanted to ask you a little bit about uh a little about about your plans with the lines. You've been very, very clear. Heisei, Ultimates, Showa, Reaction. Uh, you offer something to both of those customers at the same time as the lines go. They will eventually begin to overlap a little bit as they sort of yeah, move. They, they will overlap and cross over ships in the night at some point, yes. Exactly. You know, you can look at how other lines, like Reaction, what's going on in Reaction can sort of act as a predictor for what happens in Ultimates. I think that Beastie Boys reaction was a very good example of that. Like that sold out crazy fast. A lot of your music stuff that sells out really well, you eventually see an Ultimates figure. 
And I feel as though you've talked a little bit about who you might like to see, who you're most excited about with Shoa. I have like a <laughs> sneaking suspicion that we know who the first Shoa character in Ultimates might be. You know, just call it a hunch. I, I don't know about calling it a hunch, but <laughs> uh, he'll probably he, he's going to be when we get to Shoa Ultimates. You better believe that. Mechagodzilla 74, as opposed to MG2 from 75, the uh, 74 Mechagodzilla is going to be in there in short order. Because, <laughs> uh, but I, you know, it, it, when we start talking about ultimates, you know, I think I, I, I'd be very remiss not to start with 54. You know, I see as, as the very first character. We, you know, we're not we're not there yet. Sure. Um, uh as kyle may or may not you know he's been working on some other characters already we've got some other stuff ready so uh it's been a little bit of a, a break in our ultimates business for toho you know in terms of new pre-orders as we've been finally delivering some of these other ones mm -hmm. so th there's some new pre-orders uh in the works awesome awesome well you know, <laughs> looking at the love for Mechagodzilla, um, I, I knew... Who doesn't Mechagodzilla? love Mechagodzilla? <laughs> sure, sure. But, but, you know, Mechagodzilla and Hedra, I feel like... I feel like those are, like you said, short order. Maybe not first, but short order. Those are some ones that you're excited to get out there. Um, with, the with the stuff that you've done so far, we've got Heisei stuff. We've got Showa stuff. We've, you know, even with Minus One, Ultimates landing soon, Reaction coming next year... We, you could say that we've dabbled in sort of the modern Rewa era as well. But the one era that we haven't seen anything from yet is the Millennium Era. To for, forget the Ultimates thing, this was not meant to be here. Uh, and I'm just kind of curious to hear from you. Have you sort of thought about how you want to, to break into Millennium? Because Millennium, to me, is, is one era that has been kind of underserved. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've definitely got some Millennium stuff you know, in the works. Um, it's mostly Godzilla focused. Um, the Millennium Monsters, obviously you got Orga here. Um, the Millennium Monsters, you know, sometimes the takes on them are cool. Sometimes I'm like, ah, oh, I prefer <laughs> the, the, the original the show award or the Hise one. And then the Millennium one, I'm like, ah, you know, it's all right. It's not my sure. favorite version, but it's all right. Uh, no, but there's definitely several iteratives of Godzilla within Millennium that are like, okay, wait, those are like iconic level Godzillas. Why haven't you gotten there yet? Mm. You know, so. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I I went on a tangent when I talked to Kyle because the Godzilla 2001, the one where he's fighting Baragon, Mothra Ghidorah, that is my favorite movie. And we somehow got on the topic of him and I was like, well, Kyle, when you get to that, to that Godzilla, he's got to have this and this and this and this. And he was like, okay, like, Leave me alone. I, I know how to do my job. You know? like, maybe I've already done it. I don't know. Just, yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But 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 cool. I I'm very curious to see when you guys get to Millennium. Uh I'm I'm very much with you. Like I, I feel like some of the designs I don't know, they almost feel like sports mascots to me in a little bit of a way. I I just think, you know, I, I think I don't want to be sound like it's just at some point it's like some of them like you know it's like okay we're gonna we they feel a little bit in some of the millennium monsters not that we don't love them my 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 main man ebra gets kicked in by a couple of humans uh which it's not great. i still don't understand the ebra but that's okay <laughs> it's it's sent it's sentimental it's my first yeah. godzilla movie um you know I it's just all right. Want, I just want all right. We've all got them. I mean, come on. Mine's Hedra. I mean, if you've ever really watched the movie, it's it's it can be it's it can be a slog at times, <laughs> for sure. Um. So last thing I wanted to touch base with you about. Um. I'm actually surprised that I've been able to get away with not asking you about this character for so long. It's kind of like the boogeyman of the Godzilla series. Was is supposed to be in ten different movies, and he ultimately showed up in zero. Uh, and that is this monster here, Baggin. And yeah. I just, I just want to touch base with you to think, like, you know, what are your thoughts on Baggin? Do you think he makes for a cool toy? Do you think this is something that you'd be interested in doing? 
I, you know, I think right now, you know, if we're talking about all the stuff that hasn't been done, I think there's a lot of things that get in line before this guy. Okay. You know, not not in a super negative way, but it's just, you know, there there's so many, so many monsters, and sure. yeah, he is technically one, but even even if he was in several movies and you know had been played a much more larger role would he still be one of your favorites i'm not sure yeah i think that that's fair um i think maybe that there's something to the the mystery of what could have been everybody's been like what about bag and what about bag and what about bag because he shows up in a in a video game and then that's it <laughs> yeah i mean you that that's one where you you start to get into this zone of like it's checklist and it's technically accurate it's but but do you actually want it is a different you know, do you actually want to spend the money on that is it sort of a different thing where it's like i like the idea of it but i'm not sure you know i'm not saying that necessarily directly about him but we get that with a lot like oh this prototype never came out you got to make this prototype and it's like well do you want it because it never came out or do you want it because you think it's rad like that that Godzilla 2001 movie where it was originally supposed to be Anguirus, Varon, and Baragon rather than Baragon, Mothra, and and Ghidorah, um, and you know some of those designs like they they look kind of neat, but is it like is it that you want figures of those because they were never made or because you think that those those designs are really cool? Because a big difference. Yeah, and sometimes it's just. I know they exist, so therefore I want them to exist in a, in a more real setting, whether or not, like, there might be a reason that they never came to screen, mm -hmm. you know, because we came up with a better idea or I'm, I'm just whatever. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, a, I, as, as we well see within reaction, I'm not opposed to deep cuts. I think the deep cuts are easier when it's $20 a deep cut than when mm -hmm. it's $85 a deep cut. So that's everything I had queued up. Uh, one thing I actually forgot about. Um, have you been following the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers versus Godzilla comic? This thing that's currently going on? No, I know about it. And they asked us about it when it was sort of uh, in its formative stages. and uh, But I haven't really been following it um, just bandwidth wise. You know? Sure. Um, but uh, I, I know it it's gotten a really positive response uh so yeah well they made a second series i guess because yeah. the first one did so well and in the second series they made zords of the kaiju there was a, a king caesar zord rodan zord mothra zord uh the the dragon zord is now the godzilla zord um and they combined into the megazord and then they made the chaos rangers turn into chaos versions of destroyer space godzilla like the designs are just are just rad. They are so wicked. It sounds super cool. Like uh, idea of a King Caesar Zord sounds pretty rad, quite honestly. Yeah, and he forms like the right leg of the Megazord along with Anguirus. Um, and so it's something I wanted to ask you about because, as far as I'm aware, you are holding Power Rangers and Toho right now, um, and. Don't yeah, know that's how it got brought up to us in the very beginning. Was like, oh, do you think there's something here? And I think we just were like bandwidth wise, there's only so much we can get out. Sure. Um, so we didn't pursue it at that time. Mm -hmm. So, okay. But it's on the radar. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, we are aware of it. I have not been reading uh, the second series of the comic though. I don't, I haven't gotten there yet. Okay. Okay, cool. Because when those designs got shared, I was like, oh my gosh, these, these look so rad. They look so cool. The King Caesar Zord looks great. Uh, the Mothra one's kind of, it's really cute actually, but it looks, <laughs> looks really cool. Uh, so cool. That's great to know about. Uh, Brian, that's everything that I had queued up. Uh, we're just a few minutes over the hour. Thank you so much for your time. I uh, really, really oh. appreciate it. It's always such a pleasure to chat. Um, yeah. I um, wish I had more exciting news for you or exciting things to show off. I mean, other than. There you go. One, one more time for the camera. Uh, there we oh, go. Arriving so this, soon. This is, the very, this is the very first test shot that we got. I mean, technically, if you look in the light, I think if I hold it this way, you can kind of see that 
while this is black, like this is actually like a dark olive green. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, when we got this, we we're like, oh hell yeah, here we go! <laughs> like this is gonna be great. And oh yeah, we did a wonderful job on that. Uh, obviously, coming soon. Yeah, Blazing, Blazing Godzilla. Godzilla in stock. It, this will be an in stock release. So this will be super fun. Uh, and there's a bunch of other cool stuff in the works. There's uh, both reaction wise and uh, um, ultimates wise. And there's there's a couple other things in the mix. So soon, next couple months, there'll be a couple other surprising and exciting things in the Godzilla world that will come out of nowhere for everybody. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, that is that is quite the uh that, there there's the news. There's the there's scoop. The news. There's, there's the, the scoop. scoop. Exactly. <laughs> um I think I think the announcements on some of that stuff happens in late September. So there's something going on for late September uh, into October. Okay. Okay, um, that's that's approaching Godzilla Day, 70th anniversary. It, it is not tied into Godzilla Day. It is not tied into Godzilla Day. It is separate okay. from Godzilla Day. Wow. Godzilla Day would be November 3rd. 3rd? Yeah. I can't even keep it straight anymore. Like, <laughs> which day is what going on shelf, and what is who, and what marketing yeah. moment is that, and what's the pre-tease? But, yes, uh, we... we, we we're working on some fun stuff for Godzilla Day. Nothing too crazy. And then, um, yeah, there's something cool late September, early October that we'll be announcing. So that'll be fun. That'll be great. That's New York Comic Con's... It's not, it's not tied to New York Comic Con. No, just, just kind of it, it, just, its just, own it, moment. Its own, its own thing. It's its own baby. All right. Okay. So. Very cool. Awesome. That's right. More Godzilla for more people. Perfect. That's all you need. <laughs> <laughs> Was it like, what is it? The hierarchy of needs just at the top? Just, you know? Exactly. Godzilla. <laughs> Godzilla. Yeah. Perfect. Whatever Godzilla needs, that is your first thing that you got to take care of. <laughs> oh, amazing. Well, with that, Brian, thank you so much. Uh, I'll throw the socials on screen so people can follow you, keep up to date with everything you got going. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, yeah, of hopefully chat again sometime in the future. Yeah, maybe, maybe in October. Maybe in October. All right. <laughs> Perfect. Great. Thanks, Brian. See you.